Good morning. I'm walking on the grass on my power walk this morning. Because huh. I nearly went arse over breakfast just back there. You know that thing where you go, oh! <laughs> That was me. And why? Well, there's a the frost on the floor and there's the ice on the roads. And the road I tend to go on, well not the road I go on, not tend to go on, but the road that I go on is a back road. And uh, the local council won't treat this. More chance of platting fog, of which you may be able to see behind me, I'm surrounded by as well. That's somebody coming. Uh, somebody coming. Uh, it's uh, a little bit like a bloody racetrack, this road at times. Do you know what tickles me? 4x4 has just gone past, you know, one of those pickup 4x4s? And he didn't want to go on the mud. Bless his cotton socks. Don't want to get your four by four dirty now, do we? Drives me mad. Yeah, that's about like Bambi on ice, is that? Ha! Never mind. Bit of mud up your trousers and on your boots doesn't do you any harm, does it? Anyway, some people like the little bit of a life story that I gave a few days ago. This is madness. Have you seen this? Look at this. What's this all about? Why isn't that frozen? So I thought, okay, part two. So part two, where was I born and all the rest of the stuff. I was going to write a book, but I'm going to entitle this series of personal life stories or video blogs. One man! Because that's how I feel. It's been, for my life so far, it's been one man. Me. I've taken it all on. I've the one that's fought the fight. <laughs> this is madness. I'm the one that's fought the fight. I'm the one who has, uh, is that all right? That's all right. I can see ahead it isn't. Way Bloody hell fire. I might be trying to go a step too far today. Which is a bit of a bugger. Anyhow, brought into the world on the 15th of October 1958 into a little area called Bishop Auckland. And Bishop Auckland's claim to fame it was the first town to win the World Cup, would you believe? The football team now is rubbish, but back then it was. And my dad was a policeman. And my mother was a shop worker in, uh, in Bishop Auckland. And of course, on his rounds as a young policeman, she caught his eye. <laughs> He's told me some stories, because I filmed his life story. And I filmed his life story, obviously, 
when he was alive. He died just over two years ago, bless him. And I say bless him even though uh, I suppose in today's world you would call it child abuse. In fact, <laughs> it's a strong word, isn't it? What is child abuse? Many of He did what he thought was right. And I guess if he hadn't done what he did, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. And there's nothing I can do about it, so move on. If you can't take a joke, you shouldn't have been born. So I was, and I think I went to live in Church Street in Bishop Auckland. And I believe that's opposite the school now. But very shortly afterwards, I went to live at Easington Lane which was a pit village and back in the day it was very much pits all round Durham in fact my grandfather was a blacksmith in the pits and um, my dad was a bobby and he was a traffic cop you know those, I don't know if you've ever seen them, those black jags with the one little blue light on the top and the bell on the front yeah that was him told me stories about chasing cars where <laughs> the battery would start to die on the car and so his blue light would be going wee 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 and his bell would be going ding ling 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 ding ling 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 ding a ling a ding ling ding a ling a ling ding ding because <laughs> In those days, of course, any extra or external power re requirements, the batteries couldn't keep up. And there was a photograph of me taken, standing in front of the car. I can't find it anymore. And I first went to school at Easington Lane. That school now has been knocked down, and there's houses there. But a couple of memories that I, I recall are I was the only one in the class to draw a football properly. Because back in those days, a football was called a lacy. And it was a lacy because it was made of panels of leather stitched together. <laughs> Uh, and it was laced at the top with a, a bladder inside because my dad played for the Durham police in goal so I knew exactly isn't it funny how some things are remembered eh? and it was me who got it right in the whole class because everybody else just drew a circle and I drew a circle with the crosses and the little laces at the top and the teacher went Kevin you're the one that's right. Yay, miss! I was also made to be milk monitor. Carrying the bottles of milk around. Way hey hey. Um, that's better. Carrying the bottles of milk around to the classrooms where we had our little... I can't remember, was it a half pint or a quarter pint? I can't remember. There is one occurrence which sticks out in my mind quite strongly and that was because one day I had the shits and back in those days you wore shorts well I did anyhow you wore shorts and the shorts I still think are a good thing but that's because I was brought up in it and I was in class and I went, Miss, 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 miss. I need to go to the toilet. No, you can't go. Miss, miss, I need to go, I need to go. And they let me go and I ran to the toilets because they were outside toilets. And I just got to the, the toilet and I must have allowed my muscles to relax slightly. And it went. Hey, hey. Whoop. <laughs> hey, 
Yeah, buggy. I'm going back. Change hands because this hand's freezing. Uh, and I crapped all the way down the back of my legs. And I was made to to wait because I didn't want to go back into class, obviously. It's a steep hill, this one. And eventually the teacher came to find me and took me to the headmaster and I was made to stand outside the headmaster's study and he took me back to my me parents because at this stage I'd moved from Easington Lane down to Rainton Bridge which is just outside of Hortonley Spring <coughs> Because in those days again, policemen used to move every couple of years because getting friendly with the locals wasn't seen as a good thing. Because, uh, I don't know, was it corruption? I don't know. I don't know. But that's where My first parts of the years that I was brought into this world began. Oh yeah, at Easington Lane, I also caught uh, German measles. I don't know if that's around anymore. And got a temperature so high, I was very close to being hospitalised. Apparently a temperature of 104. And opposite the house was a farm. My dad used to work for the farm. Because as a bobby, wages were poor. And he had to take a second job on to try and make ends meet. And, uh, yeah, it was tough. It was that tough a memory has just come flooding into my mind. My dad killed my pet rabbit. Friggin' hell, this is really. <laughs> he killed my pet rabbit. It must have been because there was no meat or he couldn't afford anything. But I can see him straight away now. Poker in his hand, rabbit by the back legs, and hitting him on the back of the head with the poker. My pet rabbit. <laughs> but then in the winter, he built me a car out of snow. It was fabulous. Uh, that was bloody fabulous. So you see, life is ups and downs no matter what, isn't it? So as I say, we walked down to Rainton Bridge. I still kept going to the school at Easington Lane. And something else that I did, because as a boy you don't know, do you? I used to catch bumblebees in jam jars. And I threw a jam jar with a bumblebee in, into the bushes. Because at the back of the house at Rayton Bridge, there was uh, an old railway line that went down to a pit works, which wasn't very far away. It's now a nature reserve at, 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 at Rainton Mill, something like that, I think it is. But it's now a nature reserve for Durham wildlife. I'm sure there'll be more, but until the next time, it's a little bit more about Kevin. Bye bye for now.